in the dense jungle forests, the mountains of South America, in swampy soils. These plants have amazing ways of surviving and hunting. Discover the secret life of carnivorous plants and find out everything from unique traps to attractive leaves. This is the first in a series of videos about meat-eater plants. Don't miss it! Common butterwort, or Pinguicula moranensis. The name Pinguicula comes from the Latin word pinguis, which means fat, because of the fatty texture on the surface of the carnivorous leaves. The plant species was first collected by Hamble and Bonplan on the outskirts of Mina de Moran during their Latin American expedition in the years 1799 to 1804. Pink, purple or violet flowers bloom twice a year on upright stems measuring up to 25 cm long. There is also a rare one with white flowers. Later in the dry autumn season, the summer look with flowers are replaced by winter rosettes of small succulent leaves. This protective winter rosette allows the plant to undergo winter dormancy until the first rains in the spring season. This plant's leaves are carnivorous, they have a big surface with a sticky material for catching and eating insects, mainly flies. The cells on the leaves produce liquid that looks like small drops on the surface of the leaves. This wet look tricks animals looking for water into becoming the plant's next meal. When an insect touches the leaf, the plant puts out more sticky stuff from its storage cells. If the bug starts to wriggle, it activates more and more of the sticky liquid, what wrapping itself around. After capturing the prey, the digestion process starts. The plant's enzymes decompose the insect's digestible parts, then the fluids from insect are absorbed into the plant, while the insect's chitin shell remains on the leaf. It comes from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras and Mexico. The butterwort grows in mountainous areas or on a tree trunk, most often in oak and pine oak. Also tends to grow on rocks of the trans-Mexican volcanic belt. If you fancy having one, this species can easily grow on well-lit window sills under fluorescent lights or in warm to hot greenhouses. Cobra lily or Darlingtonia californica. The plant was discovered during the Wilkes expedition in 1841 by the botanist William Dunlop Breckenridge. Many carnivorous species live in hostile environments, so their root systems are usually as highly adapted as their leaves. So, the cobra lily has a very large and extensive root system. It can even survive fire by regenerating from its roots. Also unique is that the plant controls its internal water levels, releasing or absorbing water pumped up from the roots into the trap. When an insect gets cold, the plant uses its curled hood to hide the tiny exit hole and offers several false exits. The slick walls and hairs of the pitcher tube stop prey from getting away. After trying to escape from the false exits multiple times, the insect will tire and finally fall into the trap. The cobra lily is from Northern California and Oregon in the United States. It grows in box and usually on serpentine soils. It's not very common because it's rare to see in nature. The pollination method of the cobra lily is still a mystery. The most likely pollination of this kind of plants is the flower attracts flies or bees with an unpleasant smell or nocturnal insects. However, hand pollination was not successful, but indicating that self-pollination may occur. It's curious that wild-type plants appear green in moderate light and bicolor it in intense sunlight. Unfortunately, this plant is difficult to grow because it needs certain environmental conditions. Cape Sandew or Drosera capensis because of its size, ease of cultivation and large seed production, it has become one of the most commonly cultivated sundews. Also, it's one of the simplest carnivorous plants to keep indoors. The Cape sundew has long strap-shaped leaves covered in brightly colored tentacles, 
which produce a sticky substance that catches insects. When the plant captures an insect, the leaves start to roll towards the center. This helps digestion by bringing more of the sticky substance into contact with the prey. It takes about an hour for the leaves to fully curl around the prey, and it takes over 6 hours to complete digestion. Those tentacles' red tips are responsible for absorbing nutrients. It's native to the Cape of South Africa. The flowers can pollinate themselves when they close, and also producing large quantities of very small spindle-shaped seeds that are released from the capsules that form when the flowers die. The plant likes sunny places with poor soil, plenty of water, and no lime. It also blooms in the summer, which is December and January in South Africa. Carnivorous plant fans notice that the seeds often end up in nearby pots, where they germinate easily, giving Cape Sandew a reputation as a weed. Interesting fact, in New Zealand this plant is included on the National Pest Plant Accord, which means that it's not available from plant retailers. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.